We did it. Yeah. <laughs>another week yeah a little bit of a little bit of weather throwing things off this week oh my goodness um, we'll say that some weather threw some stuff off and then some pretend weather threw things <laughs> off a little bit more so yeah was, the wind today is no joke though yeah, I tried to get out of the car the door slammed back it hit right. me in the leg so yeah it's definitely crazy yeah I almost just blew you off this morning because the wind <laughs> so, right so a week like that yeah you got you get games canceled mm-hmm Short practice time. Right. How difficult is it? How, how are you going to try to get the guys back and get them back on track? Uh, you know, it's, it's difficult because it's become something where the routine is messed up. Um, you know, but one thing that I try to remind myself of is that we've put in a lot of work. And this isn't just during the season, but leading up to the season. Uh, we got some veteran guys that understand some things. I know that a lot of our guys get into the gym somewhere, even though we might not be able to do stuff. So even though we aren't having organized practices, it doesn't overly concern me because I know that we have guys that know how to continue to do what they're supposed to do. Even yesterday, we couldn't have a practice because it was a gymnastics meet. Uh, so. We just got to lift in, uh, and you know we'll have to deal with it. We'll have a, a nice hard practice tomorrow. Um, make sure we get after it, and then be ready for Tuesday. Oh. Well, so you had. To, I mean, obviously you're supposed to play Osborne Park on Friday. Mm-hmm. Um, people in Fairfax were able to play. Right. You guys weren't. Is there a time when that game's going to be made up? Tuesday. Tuesday. They're actually, we're actually going to play the game on Tuesday. Uh, we're actually going to lose the Colgan game that we were supposed to play. Okay. Uh, and move the Osborne Park game to Tuesday. So we're playing them All right. that day. Well, how do those decisions get made? I mean, is that you, AD, um, uh, a other little bit, schools? How is that all? A little bit of both. Because it's our home game, mm -hmm. it's really kind of up to us when it comes to games that are out of district. Okay. Uh, the same thing happened with Woodbridge when we had the cancellation and had to move the game from uh, the Osborne game mm. to the next day. Gotcha. We were supposed to play Woodbridge that day. Mm. So we dropped that game because it's not a district game. And we played Osborne on Wednesday. Then we got to Friday. School got canceled for whatever reason. So we weren't able to play the OP game. So I just I threw out some dates. And then he just said, we're just going to drop the Colgan game and move that game to Tuesday. So that's what okay. ended up happening. Now, in a situation like that, because that means you're going to finish the year with at least one but two probably two less games on your schedule right how does that affect playoff seedings rankings all that kind of stuff for, for schools not just for you guys but for anybody that's missing games well that well the thing about it is it's not district okay so if it was a district game that would be an issue i'm sure that would cause some problems and they have to figure out something but it's just really, it's almost, it's an out-of-district game. It's something that doesn't really have a whole lot of merit on what happens with playoff rankings. It's just to have more games on your schedule to fill the 22 games that we're allowed to play. Okay. So now instead of having 22 regular season games, we'll have 20. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. How does it, adding that game into your schedule next week, taking the other one away, um, so how many games are you set with next week? Next week we play Tuesday, Friday. So Tuesday, Friday. We have Osborne anyway. Park Tuesday, Friday. We have um, Battlefield. <laughs> yeah. So, right back. Easy week. It. Yeah, exactly. There you go. That's not yeah. like it's anything. The typical new. Cedar Run week for us. Right. So, so yeah, it's, it's always good to throw in the Osborne Park game and then follow it up with your biggest rival game. Mm -hmm. Exactly. All right. <laughs> You're a terrible scheduler. <laughs> <laughs> that one I have nothing to do with. You can blame me for anything out of district, but anything in district, I have nothing to do with any of that. So, All right. Yeah. You were, we were talking about before we got started here, five games left in the season. Mm -hmm. I mean, you're rapidly approaching the point where it's all or nothing. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's... It's one of those things that I obviously I can feel as a coach because I can see the, the, the future of it, but I'm sure the seniors are starting to feel the pinch of knowing that it's, it's getting to the point where, like, man, this is about to be the end. Right. And th those are good things because then it's a more of a sense of urgency that you see them play with. And that's why the cancellations don't necessarily bother me as much because those seniors know that i got to be ready to go when we get back at it. So. Right. It's it's rough because you know you you get to you get close with the team and you enjoy the team so you don't ever want to see it end so hopefully 
ours doesn't end until sometime in March, and that means that we won our last game. Right. And that's always a good thing if you're the last team to win your last game. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, we don't have a whole lot of basketball games to talk about from last week since you had <laughs> you know, all this stuff go on. Mm -hmm. But just being out and watching games in other parts of the, you know, other parts of Northern Virginia, um, some parts that were able to have games on Friday, mm -hmm. things like that. There's some teams out there. There's some. Uh, it's it's a lot different setup than it was last year. Right. Um, we talked a little bit about like scouting and things like that, but there's a lot of teams in different parts of Fairfax County, not exactly close to you. Right. Um, are you, how do you adjust your schedule, practice all that stuff, to make sure that you still get to see teams that you know you're not gonna you don't see right. during a regular season? Well, at this point now, like you said, we're starting to get to the point where we have to start kind of looking at that and seeing yeah. what's going to happen. Uh, so we try, try to check the schedule and see when teams are playing. You know, um, Antoinette, the girls' coach at our school, we're good in communication as far as switching practice times. If I want to get out and scout, so I would maybe practice at five instead of having our normal late slot of seven o'clock, which would be during games. Uh, a lot of times with those districts, they play their district tournament kind of opposite us. So we might actually be done when they're still playing. Right. So that helps because then we can go watch them play those games. Uh, you know, and you try to see as much as you can. Obviously, you get film exchange from some coaches and do it that way. But it's just one of those things you try to be prepared as possible. But it's really important that you focus on yourself and, and not get overly concerned with what other teams are doing because then you get lost in what you're trying to do. Right. And like I said, we not a whole lot of games last week, but the one game we did have was one of those really physical games. So we probably needed a couple of days to kind of get ourselves back together. <laughs> right. Mm -hmm. You know, the days off was a kind of a little bit double edged right there. You got you got to get them some rest while you didn't get a chance to play, didn't get a chance to practice. Mm -hmm. You got them a chance to rest a little bit. Well, it helps because we had guys with a couple of little nicks and, and little small injuries like ankle stuff. And right. so the extra time makes it so they can actually rest and not feel like they're missing something and me not feel like they're missing something by not being a part of practice the way I want. I know that we had Ja'Kai with the ankle stuff uh, a couple weeks ago, so that gives them a little bit of time to nurse that back to health. We had Lance Gaskins injure his ankle in practice, so he actually set out the Osborne game. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's good. And, you know, we got some guys that logged some heavy minutes with Devin and Hagen, so they got a little bit of time off to kind of refresh themselves. So, you know, it sucks. It's not ideal, but in the end of the day, if they can get their bodies back together and be able to come uh, and do it the right way, right. then it's not going to be that bad of a thing. The one game you had last week. Yeah. A little bit of a big game. A little bit. Just a little. A little. Just a little. Top two teams in the, in the conference there going at it. Mm hmm. Yep. Uh, Osborne, really good team. Obviously, we know they're well coached. Yes. Uh, take us through the game a little bit. Obviously, close game, tough game throughout. You talked about it being physical. Take us through the game a little bit. Though. I mean, you know, the thing about an uh, Osborne team or Rocky coach team is that you know they're going to come and play as hard as possible. Right. They're going to get to every loose ball. They're not going to do things that kind of hurt themselves. Uh, they're going to make you play at a pace that you don't want to play at. Uh, you know, for those of people that have seen UVA play, it's kind of similar right. in that regard as how they play defensively with the pack line defense. They want to try to close down the paint mm -hmm. and make you make jump shots. Uh, you know, in the first half, they dictated all tempo. They had us playing at a pace that wasn't good for us. We weren't making shots in the first half, and the score at halftime was 21-18, to which wasn't good for us because we're averaging 72. Right. And I'm sure they were happy with us not scoring that, that um, high of a clip. Uh, you know, we made some adjustments at halftime, some things to kind of speed up the tempo a little bit. The best thing that we did was we started to make some shots, mm -hmm. which actually helped us get into some of the press stuff that we wanted to do uh, and made them a little bit uncomfortable with some of the stuff we were doing defensively. And then, you know, Devin Parrish was outstanding. Shocking. Yeah. Shocking. Are you getting more are you getting more attention from college coaches asking about him the, the, from the year that he's having now and putting it together? I would say it's it I, to say that it's not more would be a lie. There is more. It's still not what I think it should be. Right. Uh, and and like we always talk about before, I know that we're biased to our own players, but you know, just to talk about the last the last let's say the last two weeks. Um, a couple weeks ago, he has 26 points and 10 rebounds. And that's, that's a great game. Right. You know, I think he shot the ball 15 times. Mm -hmm. 
Against Osborne, he has 25 points on nine shot attempts. Uh, I have never <laughs> right. seen that. Right. You know, and never seen somebody shoot the ball nine times and get 25 points. Seven for nine, four for five from three, seven for seven from the line. He rebounds the ball at a high rate, still have five or six rebounds. Um, finds guys on, on, around the floor. He's leading us in assists. And it's one of those things that now he's, got, he's gotten to that weird little vortex of, well, some schools feel like they don't have a chance. Mm -hmm. So they called me and they said, well, we haven't really reached out because we feel like he might be too good for us. I said, you never know, guys. Right. You know, it's just one of those things that, do I feel like he should play at a certain level? I do. Yeah. But even if, he's not, if you're not that level, he might feel more comfortable with you all than he does with them. Mm -hmm. It might fit him better as far as like him being able to play and all that. So just to not recruit somebody because you think that it's a waste of right. time, where it's like all you're doing is calling them. It's not like you're making trips. Right. So I get that a lot of people don't have the budgets to kind of waste that sort of thing. But that's that's like when you're talking about paying for gas and food and all that. You can call and text somebody anytime you want to. Yeah. You can email them whenever you want to. So now he's kind of caught in that where he's playing very well. So some of the schools that were talking to him initially mm -hmm. are starting to think that he might be playing above us. Right. And then the ones that I feel like that should be coming at him that are above those levels aren't coming at him the way that I feel like he should. Right. And it's just, I'm going to keep pushing him. Same thing goes with Hagen Van Diver. I mean, Hagen had 16 points, five rebounds, four assists. And that's b basically been his numbers yeah. all season. Yeah. And these guys are having the type of season they have. And the attention that you would feel like that a team that has been successful winning-wise on top of having individual success, you would expect their phones to be blowing up. Yeah. And they aren't. And there's some teams that have like, you know, done a little bit more than others, but I feel like it should be more. The crazy thing about recruiting and coaches is that as much as you like to think that they do their homework and find kids on their own, as soon as somebody gets offered, especially if it's in their conference, then all of a sudden they come and offer a kid. Right. So it just takes one. <laughs> it takes one. And, and it was so funny watching how the things blew up for Ja'Kai from a football standpoint. Yeah. Because Maryland was the first ones to offer. Mm -hmm. Now all of a sudden the rest of the teams in the Big Ten are like, who's this kid? Right. Then all of a sudden you got Ohio State, you got Penn State, you got Michigan. Mm -hmm. And they, it might have seen some film. Or they just know that, well, if that team is offering them. Exactly. We want to make sure we get them and they don't. So it just takes one to start the avalanche. And right now, I'm hoping that it happens for these guys. Yeah. And even, not just like for Devin and Hagen, you know, for other guys, you know, I'll, there's some guys that I feel like could have a chance to help some teams that might not be so high profile, like Marcus Taylor. Yeah. Marcus does a lot of great things that basketball coaches love. Mm -hmm. And it takes a coach willing to take a chance on him to give him an opportunity right. at the division three level, in my opinion, because he plays great defense. He's able to knock down and open jump shots. Yeah. He can get to the basket and score. He might not do it as much for us because we don't need him to. Right. But, you know, just takes one person to take that chance or to offer a kid. The next thing you know, everybody's ears perk up. Right. Who's that kid? Yeah. Maybe we should get in on that. So, you know, it's, it's, it's funny how it works, but I understand it. And, you know, you just try. I saw what Vershawn Lee. All of a sudden, you see his offer start. <laughs> right. Snowball. Yeah. And, it's, and that's not taking anything away from him because he's no. a really good player. Right. Um, the kid Asante from Westfield. Yes. His spring offers have been insane. He didn't just get good foot, good at football once the no. season ended. No. He was he was good at football this whole time. Why yeah. all of a sudden did it blow up this way? Right. Because one person did, yeah, and the exactly. rest of them took it uh, a look at it and were like, maybe we should pay more attention. Yeah. And it just it's the same thing with basketball. No, I I was telling somebody yesterday. My relationship goals, I want somebody to look at me like big schools are looking at Eugene Asante. Right oh, now. my goodness. <laughs> right? Listen, it's everywhere. It's insane. Right, right. And like I said, it just takes one and all of a sudden it's just everybody. Yeah. yeah. Well, and it, it, it's a game more than it is a process dealing with college recruiting. Yep. On, on virtually any, on whatever the sport is, whatever, it's, a, it's a game more than it is a process. Yep. Next thing I want to talk to you about, something okay. I saw this morning. Uh, okay. Kind of, it, it piggies back off of something we talked about last week. Mm -hmm. There's a volleyball coach in Texas. Okay. She's one of the top volleyball coaches in Texas. She is resigning because she was um, told by her athletic department or administration that she needed to play people a certain amount of time. In high school? Yeah. 
That's crazy. All right, I'm glad you haven't seen this because I'm getting your initial Oh, reaction. my goodness. There you are. Good. Because you know if I saw, I've been hot already. That's a, I'm, glad I, I'm glad you haven't seen this shit. It's Amarillo, Texas, I'm pretty sure. Yeah. Um, but she's, she's stepping down because she's asked to... She was asked to bend to the politics of so the parents sports. basically complained, and, and then the, they came to her and said that you have to do this. And the administration backed up the parents rather than their coach. Awesome. So she's stepping down. Yeah, good for her. How many good coaches do you think we're going to lose due to this? There's already good coaches that aren't coaching right now because of this sort of thing. Uh, you know, and we and we've talked about this probably I don't know how many times in in the different episodes, but it's a shame that you lose good coaches over the fact that some parents don't want their kids not to get whatever they right. want. Right. Uh, and it just, not to learn that everybody doesn't get the same things. Right. And I'm, I'm sure that it was a difficult decision for her because her stepping down means that she's not helping the other ones that are doing it the right way. Yeah. But at some point in time, you have to kind of take a stand for yourself and be like, listen, I, there's, there's certain things that I can do and there's certain things I can't. And you're asking me to go against my coaching philosophies just to appease people because they're not getting their way. Right. That's like every time your kid cries or throws a tantrum, you just give them candy. Right. <laughs> you know? And it just, it's crazy to think about that, that, that this is the world that we live in from an athletic standpoint, that all you got to do is complain to the right person <laughs> to get your way. Right. And it's, it's a shame because there's a lot of good coaches that aren't coaching probably right now. Are there some that are going to either step down or lose their jobs yeah. because of things like this? Now, coaches. Yep. Coaches have become social media philosophers. <laughs> it's, like, it's amazing to watch. Right. Uh, I know that we do a lot. Of, we've talked a lot about parents and the interactions that we have. But listen, there's not the, some of the coaches. I'm not going to say some, a good amount yeah. are insane. <laughs> they are. And they make it hard for the ones that are doing the things the, the correct way. Right. So, uh, you know, the amount of things that are spit out on social media about things. And I, I know that I have my moments where I like retweet something or I yeah. like say something. But some of these guys, man, and, and I think the biggest one right now that is like the biggest source of, let's say, conflict is the whole trainers and AAU <laughs> and coaches thing. Like that is, that one is like, I feel like a daily thing where somebody is saying something that rubs somebody else the wrong way. <laughs> yeah. So then they gotta go on a rant and then somebody's gotta get in their comments about yeah. it. And it's just, it's like sometimes you guys gotta put your phones down. It's, it's okay, you don't have to say everything. There's some things that I think, and they sound awesome. <laughs> but, said, but I'm like, you know what? I don't need to say that. Uh, that's, a, that's when you hit the little X, the little yeah. X, and you save the draft. Yeah. Don't even save the draft. Just, just to delete it because you don't remember. You don't want to remember anything that you're going to say. But there's yeah. some of them sit there, and I'm wondering, man, like y'all, man, y'all just say anything. It's you would think that AAU coaches absolutely hate and disrespect high school coaches all over the place. You would think that both high school coaches and AAU coaches hate trainers like it's it's a, well there are some that it's true it's a really funny right. it's a it's, really it's funny a, thing it's a hilarious dynamic but some of them do some of them hate the trainers some yeah. of them hate the aau coaches there's some aau coaches that hate the high school coaches and it just comes from the lack of communication yeah. some of it i mean i've had you know um i know that there's uh, maybe a couple of aau coaches that might not have been happy with me because I just I just tell the truth like I'm not trying to say anything to right. disparage you But if I feel like a kid should go play somewhere else. Yeah, that's not an attack at you personally That's what's trying to do to help that kid the best Yeah, and that's what gets lost in that with the AAU coaches and the trainers and the coaches And if it could be something where everybody had the kids best interest in yeah. Exactly if that was the sole purpose, right? None of this stuff would be a problem the problem is you want to promote your AAU brand. Yes. So you want kids to come play with you. Yeah. Okay? That's fine. But maybe it's not the best thing for that kid. Exactly. Trainers want to promote their training brand. So they want kids to come work out with them. No matter if it like is like a million times a week during the season. Right. You know what I'm saying? There's some that are like that. So they don't care. Mm -hmm. um, and it just, if it could be more communication and more talking about what would be best for that individual player because right. everybody's different 
And the problem is we group everybody into this thing and they're like, well, this is what we should do. Well, that might not be the case. No. Like I said, I do my best in the off season of trying to schedule my workouts around when I think AAU practices are. Right. I really do. And I know a lot of coaches don't do that, which is crazy to think about because, <laughs> right. and I said this to a coach, a friend of mine, and it was so funny because and she got mad because her players were missing workouts. Right. And I said, listen, if you give kids a chance to make a choice, they're going to make the wrong one. Yes. <laughs> I said, so you're making them choose between an AAU coach and your workout. They're going to choose the AAU practice because the AAU coach is telling them that they have to be ready to play in these tournaments because they need to get recruited, right. which is the main goal of everyone. This is why parents get the way they are. This is why AAU coaches get the way that they are. That's yeah. what happens. That's why. So I try to do my best to schedule our workouts around the opposite days of AAU practice. Now, everybody's not the same, but most of them practice Tuesday, Thursday. Like yeah. I said, they get back Monday, um, late Sunday night. They don't practice on Monday. They want to practice Thursday before they leave on Friday. Mm -hmm. So I try to work, have our workouts Monday, Wednesday. If your coach decides that he wants to be a Monday, Wednesday person, now that's where the conflict comes. Right. But that's where the communication comes from with myself, the player at first, and then possibly the AAU coach, depending yeah. on who it is. And I tell kids, I said, listen, if you decide that you want to go to AAU practice, I'm not going to like it. But I said, you know, and but if you don't want to make us a priority in the off season because it's important that you're here and you do that stuff, yeah. then you can't necessarily be like, well, coach, make me a priority during the season. Now, I'm not going to outright punish you because you missed some stuff, but it is going to have it's going to be in my mind. Right. Just like that AAU coach is going to be upset about you missing his practice. Yeah. But I guarantee you he's still going to play in that tournament. <laughs> right. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> so that's the thing that kills me yeah. about it. It's like you add kids on your teams all the time at AAU. Don't tell me that your AAU practices are so important right. that they have to be there all the time. Because it's, it sounds bad because I coached AAU, so I get it. And I had a kid that came and played for me that never came to anything and just showed up at a tournament So he didn't know the stuff we were trying to do so it was hard to play him. Yeah But if that kid was a transcendent talent I would have ran less stuff <laughs> You know what I'm saying? So but for kids that are like marginal they have to be at stuff like that yeah. So it's just it's it's difficult. It's just like you said this it's a hard conversation because the egos get involved yeah. with everybody so and that's that's the I'm glad you said it brought it up about everybody if they put the best interest of the kid because um, that's the thing I think uh, like AAU coaches and trainers lose sometimes is you're not trying to get him to come there him or her to come there and play because you want to help them get to college mm -hmm. you you want to help them help you win games right um, so let's be honest about it but also they don't have to deal with all of the things that you do. No. You know, like there's a big difference between coaching an AU team, coaching a high school team. Right. Um, not to say that. Right. that and I'm, I'm done. To, right. Yeah, right. I'm, I'm done both. So I get it. I understand right. it. You know what I'm saying? And it's it's a it's a dynamic that's pretty tough, like you said, because you're only playing like a, uh, on the weekends. You don't yeah. have. You're not practicing all week with them. Right. Um, some if they're not a sponsored team, like a, a, a shoe sponsored team, you have to pay. So now parents really. Right. get upset about whether or not their kids are playing because they're paying for this and they're paying for hotels mm -hmm. and everything else like that. It's difficult. Like I said, I've coached AU a couple different years, so I understand it's, it's, a, it's a hard thing. Yeah. But it's not the same. No. no. <laughs> it's not. It's not. You no, when you bring grades and administration and counties and all you know, everything. state school, all that, right. all that stuff. Everything. You bring Three different... Pro um, nine, freshman JV varsity right. that you have to deal with doing an off-season program, Coaches. in season program, coaching staff. Yeah. And it's like I said, some of them, like I said, they run their stuff as best they can as like a program, and I get it. But there's still time where they take like time off. Right. You telling me that they're planning for AAU season in December? Maybe they are, and I don't know. I don't right. want to talk bad about them, and, and I'm sure I'll get a phone call or a text saying, "Yeah, we do." Yeah. Well, I don't know why. <laughs> if you are. You know what I'm saying? Like November, December, like you guys should be chilling. You're There's not the a time all year where I get to chill out. No, but August you're doing the work the for them in the in November and December. Thank you. <laughs> you're doing the work for them. I mean, I start, like I'm starting to see people now talking about 
AU and where they're gonna play and practice. And I'm just like, man, that's crazy, dog. It's like January. Yeah. Like you don't really start playing any games until April yeah. that matter, because that's the live period. Yeah. And it's just to think that it's already something like I understand them having to know what tournaments they're gonna go to. Yeah. But I don't know. But like I said, it's just one of those things. Maybe I just need to have more conversation with those guys <laughs> so I can have a better understanding. Maybe. No, just another thing to add on your plate. Yeah, yeah. Oh. It's okay. Yeah, it goes with the territory. There you go. <laughs> well, OP in Battlefield this week. Yes. Yes. Good luck. Yes, I appreciate it. I'll Be see ready. You now. OP, you know, got some some wins under their belt and are playing a little bit better. So I'm sure they're going to come in with a point to prove that we're here yeah. now, and hopefully we can go ahead and shut that down very quickly. And then obviously Battlefield, a rivalry game on a Friday night, it's going to be insane. Yeah. No, no it's not, there's nothing else to say about that. No. <laughs> no. Yeah. I was in OP's gym yesterday. Yeah. Shout out to the OP girls basketball team. Yeah. Chrissy, man, you know, she does her thing. So. She's great. Yes, yeah, she is. She's great. I think I told her yesterday, I said, you know, we were shooting some of the girls basketball team, but I said, I got to come back and talk to you and get you. Because if I don't capture your passion for the game, oh, yeah. I am not doing my job. She's one of the best coaches in Northern Virginia as a, you know, obviously a history of being very good there. Um, what she did at Forest Park and the type of player she had there. So I know she started to do that at OP. Um, being in our district, I can't necessarily root for her. But. Right. From afar, I'm saying good job, and I, I I appreciate her as a coach for sure. And nothing wrong with having good coaches in the county, no matter where they're coaching. No question, no question. No. Well, thank you all. We'll see you next week. All right. Let's eat. Yeah, we we'll get some <laughs> eat, man. <laughs>